Hey everybody, it's day four. It's Monday, December 4th, and it happens to be day four of my 12 days of Christmas. Today, I am using the Forever Forest bundle. This is a fabulous bundle. It's got trees that you can stamp and you can dye, and these little rocks right here are so cute. I'm gonna show you in a minute why I say that. Um, if you haven't joined me before, um, every year I do a 12 days of Christmas where I focus on a different bundle from the holiday catalog. So, um, hop back on my blog. You'll see them there. We've done three already and we've got more to go. So, um, today is day four. Um, today is also the last day to get your order in. If you want last Friday's sending cheer, make it takes for free. Okay. So this bundle doesn't have any sentiments. So uh, let me show you what I'm using. Um, sending warmth your way, I thought was a good one for a little snowy scene. And then more wishes, I am using that Mary right there. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get a little bit messy with some watercolor paper. And let me get some grid paper. I don't have my big grid paper, but my little grid paper will do just fine. All right. We're going to start by making, see how my trees have just different colors, different variations, different depth. We're going to do that by just layering on lots and lots of color onto our watercolor paper. And I have got old olive and mossy meadow. And you can start with one or you can start with both. I'll just start with old olive here. And I've got my water painter. And I am just gonna start laying down color. No rhyme or reason, you just wanna add color. You wanna make sure that you are using enough water so that your paint is gonna, or your ink is gonna blend. All right, so add that. And I like to leave some light spaces, some dark spaces. I also like for my, my water to puddle up a little bit so that when it dries, that's when you get kind of those um, those water edges, if you know what I'm talking about, they really add a lot to your um, piece. So I'm just going to now add Mossy Meadow again, just, you know, layer, layer, layer. I mean, there's no right or wrong. This is fun for me. I love to do this. Now, what I'm going to do is set it aside and let it dry. I'm going to come back in 10 minutes and I'm going to do it again. Set it aside to dry, come back in 10 minutes, do it again. I'm gonna do it again and again until I've got layers of color that are dark and light and splotched and have edges and are all different. Then I'm gonna, at the end, I'm gonna take the ink and I'm gonna flick it like this so that I have splatters. Now, obviously we're not gonna do all of that on the video, but I am gonna show you my finished piece that I did ahead of time. Look at that. See how you can just see splotches? These are those lines that I'm talking about where the water dries. I've splattered ink. Then I also went back with some Stampin' Blends and splattered that. Another thing you can do is splatter water, let it sit for a minute, and then take your paper towel and dab it. That will create some lighter splotches. So now you've got this piece, this wild and crazy splotchy piece, and we're gonna cut out as many trees as we can out of this piece. And we've got a lot of trees to choose from in this die set. We've got big trees, small trees, medium trees, tiny trees, and I am actually going to do them upside down. They're very intricate or more intricate than a lot of, uh, of our dies. And so I'm going to start out like this where I'm going to put them upside down where the cutting edge is up. We're even going to save a couple of these trees for tomorrow's project. All right, you can get a lot of trees out of one piece. So let me turn it this way. All right, so the cutting edge is up. I put the paper on top of it. When you do this, the cut and emboss machine adds a lot more pressure, which helps to cut through. When you have a die that is kind of um, persnickety, if you will, and it doesn't cut very well. If you turn those dies upside down, you will have a lot, a much easier time getting those out. Now, because now I've used a lot of my paper, I really need to see where I'm gonna put my trees. So this time I'm gonna run it through the right way. 
all right? And it'll still work if you, um, if you, if you wanna run them upside down, what you can do is cut off the pieces that you have left and lay, lay them on top. That way you can see exactly where you're putting them. Or cut off the paper. If that made any sense at all, I don't know. <laughs> I think you guys know what I'm saying. But anyways, we're gonna just cut out a whole bunch of trees and they're not, they're gonna come out, they come out pretty well. The ones that, I find the bigger ones don't come out quite as well this way. And if you still are struggling, add a piece of cardstock on top of your clear plate. Like that one's really gonna give me some issue. Let's see, let's cut it again. One, another trick is to run your paper through this way. Let's cut this off. Um, when you run your, your um, die long ways, like this, it has more time, more pressure is pushed down onto the die, which helps cut it as well. All right, so I've got some more scraggly pieces here that I will cut. Let's do some of the, let's see, can we get this one? I really wanted to do another one of these, but I don't know. Let's try and see if we can get that one on there. And then we'll do that skinny one right there. And then I think that will be enough for now. All right, let's run those through. Go through a couple of times. And let's see now, you can see on the back of your paper, you know when it's cut through, you can see it. All right, see, isn't that neat? You can see all the variation in our colors. It's even light at the top, like the sun is shining. Some splatters there. All right, let's see how this one did. Oh, I think this one worked too. I think we got it right on the edge. All right, good. So now we've got a lot of trees to choose from. We're gonna do some other die cutting here. I really, I love to stamp, but I really love to use die cuts. You know, if I had to choose one, I, I might say I would choose a die cut over a stamp. I don't know, I don't know why I feel that way, but I do. Okay, so now let's see, where's the card? We've got this mountain background back here. And this piece is really cool because it doesn't, it not only uh, cuts, but it embosses as well. The thing we wanna keep in mind with this is we want one of the mountains taller than the other. So I'm gonna start out with a larger, well, they're both the same size, I think, about the same size. I'm gonna start with this one a little bit higher. It's not gonna cut this long edge, it's only gonna cut that top edge. All right, so I'm gonna cut this across. The other thing we wanna keep in mind is we're doing two layers of mountains is that we don't want them to be cookie cutters. We don't want the exact mountains we don't wanna cut this so that the exact mountains are repeated right here. See how I varied it? I put the big one over here and the big one over there. Let me show you how I did that. This time I'm gonna go closer to the bottom and I'm gonna put my die over here. Let's put it even further like that. Whoops, let's see if I can get this on here without messing that up. My plates are about at the end. I've used them a lot. Now I'm gonna take the die and I'm gonna put it right, let's move this paper down like this. I'm gonna put it right, let's do like this, so that that line right there is gonna end, do we want that one? Right there where that mountain starts. All right, and the other thing that you gotta remember to do when you're doing this is to lay your plate only over the parts that you want to cut. So I'm kind of lining the cut edges up. Let's see how I did. Now see right there. See how we created our own little mountain line? All right, and now our mountains are kind of shifted over. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is cut out some of these boulders. And I'm gonna, I think I used four, so we're gonna cut out four of them. And I thought those were boulders at first, but I believe those are clouds. <laughs> I mean, I think you could use them as boulders, but once you cut them out, you'll see that they look different. They don't really look like the boulders do. 
All right, let's run these through. Lots of cutting. Put your cut and emboss machine to work. All right, I've got a nice little pile here. I've lost one of my boulders. Did you guys see? There it is. All right, let's see what we've got. Now, we've got a lot. I've got a mess. That's what we've got. <laughs> Worth it. Okay, I'm going to start my snowy background. Is actually a piece of our winter meadow paper, I believe it's called. It's listed on my blog today. There's a supply list for you, okay? I'm going to take Whisper White, and I'm going to take, there's a little snow um, stamp in this set, and I'm just going to kind of add some snow along the top, and it's very light. You're not going to see a lot of it, okay? Set that aside. Now, I'm gonna take my mountains and let's see how we did. This one may need to go up even, I think it does, needs to go up a little bit higher like that. And then this one we'll put here. Now look, I'm gonna have a space here, so I need to move that down just a bit. All right, I'm gonna put the back one on with stamp and seal so that it's flat, okay? And then I'm gonna put the front one on with dimensionals. We're gonna have a lot of dimension here in this, um, in this card, on this card. All right, so then we're gonna line that like that along the bottom. Whoops, I need to go over a little bit further. So see how the mountains, now they don't look identical. They look different. All right, I think I need to trim off this piece, make it even with my back. Okay, now we're just gonna start lining up our tree. And one thing I noticed after I posted the picture of my card is that I did not get all the little doodads out. You wanna get all the little doodads out, okay? And I'm gonna start with a big tree in the middle. And I'm actually gonna take some mini dimensionals at the top. Do I have mini dimensionals? I have black mini dimensionals. Do you guys think we could hide those? <laughs> Let's try it. We're just gonna put one mini dimensional right there. And the other one is gonna be glue. We're gonna put glue down here because we're making it flat against this, but because this is raised, we need to put a dimensional up here at the top. All right, let's put that right about there. And then I'm gonna just start layering in my trees. Okay, and I'm just putting liquid glue. I don't know what that is. Liquid glue. I'm gonna do various heights. Let's do kind of maybe a shorter one right here. Okay. And let's get, um, one of these, and you can start adding, I think I am gonna start adding in some dimensional strips. Um, I'm gonna use, I have my, my um, adhesive, foam adhesive strips. Let's see if they're skinny enough to fit. I can get that peeled off. And we're just gonna take that and line it right behind there. You can cut your dimensionals to be skinny if you don't have the, these strips. They do work really well for lots of things. Um, how about another tall tree? If I can get this adhesive, come on, goodness. Let's do a tall tree kind of mm, like that. All right, now let's fill in with some of our smaller trees. And we definitely want to pop, pop them up here in the front. Now remember to save a couple of trees if you wanna to make tomorrow's project. Tomorrow we'll be doing Shop the Town, if hopefully it hasn't sold out. Shop the Town goes with the 
Let's Go Shopping bundle that's in the annual catalog and it's just precious. All right, I think this is the last one that we're gonna add. And let's do it over here. All right, so once you have your cluster of trees that you like, and we may add a couple more, I don't know. Let's grab our boulders. And we want our boulders to be snowy. All right, so I'm gonna take three of my boulders. We're gonna do these. Mm, let's do two big ones and one small one. Now grab your a dauber and some of your craft ink that we just used for the snow. And I'm gonna just kind of add ink across the top so that it brings out the embossed part of the, the boulder, but it also looks like it's got some snow. Okay, now we'll get regular dimensionals. I think our dimensionals will fit back here. And we're gonna put them in front of and behind our trees. All right, so let's slide this one kind of like that. No, that looks like it's growing out of the tree. Let's see. All right, we'll put that one in front of the trees. And then let's put this one over these trees. And let's move this one over so that it's in front of that boulder like that. And then we'll take our last little boulder. Mm, I don't know, this dimensional may be too big. And let's put it in front like that. And now we've got our little snowy scene. Okay, so what about a sentiment? Let me see if I can scrape up all this little trash. What about a sentiment? Well, I've got a blue piece here. This is blueberry bushel, and we are gonna stamp the sentiment. Remember, this is from the horse and sleigh bundle, and I'm just gonna stamp it right here on the bottom of my blueberry bushel. And we need our white embossing powder. Here it is. All right. There we go. Now, I can see that there are a few little granules holding on. So grab your, almost said toothbrush, grab your paintbrush. I mean, a toothbrush might work too. Just make sure it's dry. <laughs> and emboss that with white embossing powder. So I stamped it in Versamark and I sprinkled it with white embossing powder. And we'll trim it down. To just be a strip. And I forgot to grab my banner punch. So let's see if I can make um, a banner. I'm going to make a little snip in the middle and then I'm going to cut up from both corners. Like that. All right, it may be a little bit too long. Let's see. It's a little bit long. It's gonna to have to overlap our tree, but I think I'm gonna make it even shorter. So snip and snip. So maybe if you're gonna make this card, put your banner on first and arrange your trees around your banner so that it doesn't have to cover up any of your trees. Mine's gonna cover up just one. Mm, I don't really like that, but that's the way it's gonna have to be. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I think so. Well, we'll leave it. I may rearrange that after the video. All right, let's add a little linen thread bow. Snip, snip. Do we have our glue dots? Yes, we do. Boy, I am in the middle of about 100 things today, and I've got supplies everywhere. Do you guys ever get to that point where you're like, I'm, I'm only working on six inches of my desk because I have so much stuff out. That is me today. 
All right, let's snip that a little bit shorter. Now I cut this paper uh, four and a fourth by five and a half so that it will fit right across my card base. It's not gonna show the card base at all. So this is a blueberry bushel card base. And this piece is the size of the card front. All right, what about the inside though, guys? Let's add some trees along the bottom. So get your just a four by five and a fourth inch piece of basic white and get your trees. And I like to stamp and then stamp again. So we're gonna have a variation of trees, light and dark, like there's some in the background, okay? There we go. And then we will adhere that inside of our card. There we go. I think this might be my favorite card we've made so far. So pretty. All right, let me clean up and we'll make our second project. All right, our second project is a hand sanitizer holder. I love making these. They're inexpensive and you can find lots of different um, flavors and colors at Bath and Body Works. This one has a gold tree. It's called Golden Berry Mistletoe. So we're gonna make a little holder for it. Um, the holder is very easy. We're gonna use Mossy Meadow. And this piece is uh, four and three fourths by three and three fourths. On the short side, I'm gonna score it at one and two and three fourths, and then turn it and score it at one and two on the long side. Now, this is very easy to put together. I don't even have my bone folder. I don't think we need it. I think we're okay. This one's just gonna to come together really easily. Burnish those lines, and then snip your lines along the long side. If you have been around me for any length of time, you know I love to make these. We've made this variation of hand sanitizer holder for years. If you search my blog for hand sanitizer, you will find lots and lots of these. And some are different, some are in different types of holders. I've changed them over the years. All right. Adhesive on the outside of those two middle tabs, fold up into these sides right here. And then adhesive on the inside of the square tabs, fold them up and wrap them around. I've got white embossing powder on everything. There we go. Now take your scissors and we're gonna cut this at an angle from the front to the back corner, all right? back corner to the front so now it's kind of like a magazine holder and one thing i like to do to keep my hand sanitizers sitting down into in the little holder is to put a dimensional on the bottom and stick them down like that so that they won't come out but the recipient can easily pull it out okay now i've done some cutting ahead of time i've got uh, two of these just from Mossy Meadow cardstock and a smaller one from Gold Foil. I've got a stylish shape banner and we're gonna put that on with dimensionals. All right. And then we'll put a little bit of glue here for our trees. One is gonna go there, one is gonna go, I think we might need a little more glue on that side. One is gonna go there. And then we'll take that gold one and add it right in the middle. Now while that's drying, you're gonna wanna stamp your sentiment. Remember we're using, um, well, it's buried over here now. Um, the sentiment stamp said, here it is. <laughs> I'm like, where'd it go? More wishes, okay? I stamped it in verse mark on real red and embossed it with um, 
white embossing powder. Now I'm gonna fussy cut this with my scissors. And when I do that, I like to give myself a guideline with my pencil. So I'm gonna go around the outline on the outside of it and just draw a bubble, really, a cloud around it, okay? This is easier than trying to do it with your scissors because now there's no guesswork. You just follow that line. If you make a mistake with the line, which I probably should have fixed this one right here, it's a little bit close, you can erase it and fix it before you start cutting. Also, when you're done, you wanna go back and erase any pencil marks that are there. So I'm just using my paper snips to go around. You could use other sentiments if you want. You could even die cut them with another smaller banner to put on top if you don't wanna do any fussy cutting. All right, now let me take my eraser. Uh-oh, there we go. And erase. All right, and now we'll put that on with a dimensional as well, right over our words like that. And then last but not least, let's add a gold bow. I stuck with a gold theme to match our hand sanitizer, but if you get a different hand sanitizer that's different colors, you could of course change up your colors. All right, get that bow snip those ends and add a mini glue dot right there and there you have it it's a non sugar treat that you can give out this year at christmas for your co-workers and your friends and whoever else you want to give a little treat to okay you guys that's it for day four thanks for joining me Make sure you check out the other projects. I will have a PDF at the end of the 12 days that has all the projects typed up. But for now, the supplies and measurements are listed on my blog for you. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.